That's an engineer with some personality right there. Seen him before, or her one. Check out that storm, man. I just went through that. It was pouring rain. You know, I haven't uh, done any kind of fishing things in quite some time. I've just been busy on the farm and doing some excavating type work, septic fields and stuff like that. Plus, you know, model trains have, have uh, taken up a lot of my hobby time. Not so much in the summer, but more in the winter. But it's been really hot and I really don't feel like being on a tractor today. And... I was uh, upstate New York in the Messina area yesterday, and there is a um, like a flea market spot there, right off of 56 where it intersects 37. And he has a lot of fishing stuff. You got to think about it. Modern fishing gear, where basically things like graphite rods and well-designed spinning reels have been sold now for decades. They get used. They don't have any resale value. People pick them up at, uh, you know, auctions and, uh, well, flea markets in this case. You know, estate auctions where the guys who do a lot of these flea market stores buy their stuff is also obviously um, derivative of, of this, you know, garage sales. And he had a box of them, just reels god knows how much he spent probably not very much so i don't know i had time started piecing my way through picking one at a time and found this one a couple others but this is the one that got my attention and it's uh i don't know mitchell 300 a modern one even though it may be relatively old uh in terms of 10 years or more it's not one of the original Mitchells, obviously. They've taken that brand name and slapped it on Chinese-built reels and things like that, of which this is one, probably. But it's a modern design. It says it has eight bearings. And way, 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 way back in, in one of my uh, more interesting fishing subjects, I had one of these where I did sort of a test. Of course, I spent about $55, $60 on it at that point in time. So when I found this one for $14, and this graphite Daiwa rod for the same $14 or $15, he had this deal where if you buy two fishing things, you get one for half off. So for this reel, Mitchell 300, and it's tight. It's There's no loose bearings on this. It works quite well. Drag works. And this rod, I spent like 20 bucks. So I guess what I'm going to do today is I had some leftover 8 pound. Let's see if we can uh, turn this into a functioning fishing rod. Let's see whether or not my $20 was well spent. Now this is a medium action rod. And one of the things I used to like is a little bit stiffer tip. And this one definitely has that. So, for what I do and how I like to fish, I like the stiffer tip for sensitivity. A little easier to set the hook for me. So I want to try that out now that we've got some string on it. So I'll string it out and step into the weeds there and see if I can't catch a fish. Isn't that the definition of win for a fishing rod? It's funny because as time has gone on, I say that there's an awful lot of over-analysis as people try to sell more and more expensive fishing gear, right? I remember years and years and years ago, my grandfather from the South, with uh, Southern humor, used to make fun of me when I would go buy lures. And he'd say, yeah, you know, Who's that lure trying to get? You or the fish? Well, I think the same is true with newer and better fishing gear. I'd say that since the 1980s forward, especially from the 2000s forward, the modern fishing rods, reels, are beyond excellent. You know, the ones you put a little money into that were 
higher quality like that one and there's also been an awful lot of uh, should I say Chinese junk that's been sold hard into the community and uh, I mean they work some of it works pretty good would you believe those two were purchased at the same point in time the difference between this one is a collected dust on a shelf and this one it actually spent time on a boat <laughs> look what happened to the finish this is a cast king and uh you can go back into my videos i think i actually did a video when i first purchased those two things and i mean it still works i can't argue with that but the finish is not the best obviously I can't believe the way it changed. I mean, these were identical. Purchased the same period of time. Actually, within weeks of each other. So, anyway. Um, that old fishing rod, I'm going to guess it's from the 90s. You know, that fishing reel. Probably 10 years old, maybe. I've got a grand total of $20 into it. And... I guess the point is it's fun going to garage sales and flea markets and stuff like that. And yeah, there's a lot of junk there too because low-end stuff usually is the first stuff to get tossed out. And uh, probably isn't worth trying to repurpose. But when you find some of the higher-end stuff, or at least a good quality stuff, in those flea markets, you can get them for pennies on a dollar like I did. And sometimes that's as much fun as anything. The hunts, it's like fishing, is more fun than the kill. So, back to the point, it either catches a fish or not, right? So let me put a lure on it and see if I can't get a fish. Of course, I can guarantee you that whether I catch a fish or not has a whole lot less to do with the rod and reel and a whole lot more to do with bait and bait presentation than, than anything else. So what am I going to use? Now this is a bag that I would put together, oh my god, several years ago. It has to be around 2018 or 19. So I guess part of the game is to see if I can go back into this old stuff. Oh, check it out. Got another reel here. That's a Shimano Senna. Or Sienna. That's a nice little reel. It's just sitting there in the bag. For some reason or the other, it didn't make the cut. But uh, got another reel in there. It's all tangled up. <laughs> uh, so you either throw this stuff out or you use it, right? I think this was put together for a trip to North Carolina. I think that's what it was. Yeah, because all these things here were working out in the Pongo River when I was down there. But what do I have in here that will work in my pond? I don't know. Oh, I know. This will work. This will work too. That'll work. So I got a couple little ones here that'll work fine, I think. This one looks like it was already cut back. What else do I have in here? So I got some spoons. Let me see whether or not they... I think what I'm going to do on this one. This is a off-brand, but it's got a really nice hook. Um, let me start with this one. I don't like the barbs. It gets hard to get them out of the face of a fish. 
So I'm going to continue to destroy the hook on this one here by getting rid of the barb before I use it to torture my fish. I want to be able to get it out of their face easy, you know? Alright, bring it up and see if we'll catch a fish. Our first fish. Not much of a fish. Fake fish, but it's fish. more of a fish. It actually works really good. This rig rod and reel concept actually works pretty good. I got little fish chasing this thing in, but I don't want little fish. Ah, damn it. I actually had a fish. That was a real fish. He won't bite again. They get educated real fast. That's the cost of having the uh, the barb cut. A little fish. A little bigger fish this time. Easy, buddy. You just get out of your head. What I need, what I need is a lure that I can get on top of that weed mat with. I got little fish popping up underneath that weed map, which, mat, which means there's probably a larger fish underneath that. Want to eat them? But I think I made the point. So what did I learn with this right here? is I learned that I like it. It has a fast enough retrieval rate. I like somewhere around five to one. And it has that. I don't know what it is exactly, but I can tell by the way it operates, it's pretty fast. It's very, very smooth. I love the drag for what it is for the cost of that reel. Boy, you can't beat something like that for that kind of money. The rod actually worked out pretty well. I'm not sure it's gonna survive. I think this reel is a little bit better than this rod. <laughs> so.
so it may have to get something a little more uh, in its class of operations. Although these old graphites, they work pretty good, you know. It's easy to set the hook with them when they have a pretty stiff spine up there in the tip. You know, I don't know what I've got that I can set on top of that weed patch. What you really need is a frog. I don't know if you can see it out there, but there's these mats of weeds. And there's constant activity. Little fish jumping up through them. And it's a hot, hot day. So chances are the bigger ones are laying underneath that, those weeds or along the edges of. So this is a place where a weedless style of fishing would do well versus the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, OCD type where you just cast and retrieve and cast and retrieve. Crankbait fishing. So anyway, I think I'm going to call that a video. I'm going to take this and toss it on top of that weed pile. It's got 8 pound test. That's what I brought that rod and reel down for, by the way. It's got 12 pound. But since we're testing this flea market purchase, with that first gen uh, graphite rod, it's gonna get the uh, the call to try this. Let me do this. Maybe I'll change the angle a little bit too. much of a fish, but it's fish. Tell you, there's only one thing I don't like about this reel, and that is it's hard to get to the little plastic line catch with that frame they have. So when you're done, you gotta have that all the way out, all the way there, otherwise, you just can't get to it. Other than that little detail, this is a heck of a deal for 25 bucks. So I think it's going to sit right here in the quad. It's got a place. <laughs>